Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Glimatan, and as always, I am Super Saiyan. Never mind that. In this video, we're gonna do some shopping. We're gonna go into shock. I'm too poor for that. So we're gonna figure out a way around this. We're gonna do some smarter shopping, and some poking, and some banging, and some rubbing, and some screwing to create an Epiphone P90 Les Paul Jr. for poor people. Then we're gonna plug in an amp and see how that works. If in this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Roll that beautiful bean footage. First off, I wanna say, this is all the fault of that damn YouTube algorithm. One day it just decided out of nowhere. You, you want a Les Paul Jr.? You need that Les Paul Jr. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't like Gibson products. He's like, yeah, but it's got a P90 in it. I know you like a P90. I mean, hell, you built one out of wood. Yeah, I, I do like P90s. I click this, check this out. Oh, oh no, it sounds like angels. It's everything I want. Why are you doing this to me? Fuck you, rat show. Oh man, he turned the volume knob back. That's just exactly right. If I don't like Gibsons, I don't need it. We've been watching you. We know you have a hard on for those one pickup guitars ever since you built that Tysco. Yeah, there is just something special about a one pickup guitar. I don't know if it's the magnetism pulling on the strings or what, but it just rings. Like, I, I, no, no. I don't really like to look a sunburst anyway. That's gonna be more of a fender thing. I got a sunburst strap. Oh, there's white ones and TV yellow and even black ones. Mean black ones. Oh, you're so right. The red ones look good. And the black ones and the yellow ones are awesome. And the black ones. Damn it, I gotta have one. Damn it, I gotta have one. Let's look on reverb right now. I'm poor, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Man, I must be out of touch. I had no idea Epiphones was going for this much. And when you find one that seems like it's a decent price, click it, look at the shipping. For the love of God! And it's sunburst, and I didn't want sunburst anyway. It only gets worse as you keep going down. Anything that's got a decent price, pick up only. Or like $50 to $100 shipping. So I figure this just must be because of that reverb markup. You know, they take a cut. Check out eBay. Let's see what the prices are like there. Bruh. Get him some milk! How about that? I feel like those uh, that old guy that would have you rake his yard and then give you five bucks because he thought that was a good price because back in his day, you'd go to town, get groceries, fill your car up with gas, do everything you wanted to do for five bucks. Well, anyway, we'll go over to Reverb again. And I tend to notice that apparently everybody wants exactly what I want. The P90 Les Paul Jr. with the cool wrap tailpiece, super expensive. The ones with the humbucker, not so much. So I got me an idea. Let's do a Google search real quick. Okay then, challenge accepted. I'm a function over form kind of guy. I'll make it happen, even if it has to be done with radiator clamps and bubble gum. I will chop one up like Eddie Van Halen if need be. So in case this ends up being some kind of ugly disaster that sounds great, but has a face only a mother could love, we're going with the cheapest one on here. Currently has a humbucker in it, so I know it'll have 500k pots, which is a mod I do on every guitar for more gain and more clarity with single coil pickups. And it's black, so that's pretty cool. It looks pretty damn nice in the pictures actually, and it's real close to me, free shipping. Put it in the cart, going home with me. Now back to eBay, we're gonna find us a good dog ear P90 to put in that hole. I looked at several different one of them and I finally found an Alnico 5 P90, over 9K, it's kinda hot, that'll be awesome. It's like 20 bucks, don't know this for a fact, but I would guess it to be better than a factory Epiphone pickup, so in the cart. And here's our grand total, I can cover this with my YouTube money. Get on my level, Matt. Four or five days later, went out and looked on the porch. There's a box out there, it said Gretsch on the side of it. Don't know how it got, didn't get stolen, but this was what was inside. Things in decent shape, it's got some scuffs and dings and stuff on it. Some scratches, a little bit of white overspray. That's cool though, cause I had to knock it into stuff and I don't have to feel bad about it. Being black, of course you're gonna see every little imperfection on it and it is fingerprint magnet. And speaking of knocking it into things, 
This is why I don't care for Gibson products. It's a terrible headstock design. Just, just begging to be snapped right off of there. But in the event that that happens, this is a bolt-on neck. Somebody may see that as a disadvantage, but I say, hey, a human with a brain built this. When the headstock does inevitably get snapped off, I can buy a replacement neck on eBay for like 45 bucks. It's already painted black and bolt it right on here. Serial number tells me that this was a Built on April 13th, 2011. Considering that, I guess it is in good shape. Before I start ripping it apart, I'll let you hear how it is right now. I mean, it does have brand new strings on it. Uh, pickup in it is muffly and hotter than hell. Back when I used to play uh, metal music with other human beings, uh, I would have loved to keep this guitar exactly like it is. It's great at pinch harmonics, chugging and growling, as well as a good like ZZ Top kind of thing. <laughs> Strings are at 440 under full tension. What, you're not supposed to do that? It's not going to do anything. So I just throw a shirt over the guitar to kind of protect it, flip it over, take that back plate off, see what we got in there. Alpha 500K Big Pots and the little reddish orange drop 22 tone cap. This is exactly what I would put in a guitar if I was wiring it myself. Although one of these pots is linear and one of them's audio taper. I guess that just fine tunes your adjustment. So it's not all bunched up on one end, but I'm here clipping out the pickup leads. I really don't see why I would desolder them. I got a solder in there anyway. Now we can remove this humbucker and it's got Epiphone stamped on the back of it and everything. That's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to keep this pickup for maybe experiments in future videos and most likely like to build a super strat or something because it's hotter than hell. Speaking of that, let's check out our P90 and let's test it and test this pickup. See how hot this pickup really is. 9.5K is about exactly where it was advertised, so it is exactly what they say it is. Now to test this humbucker. 17.5. I have never in my life seen a pickup test at 17.5. Somebody at Epiphone was drinking that day or something. All right, so now let's take this pickup cover and even see if this P90 is going to cover this humbucker hole that I was told it wasn't going to. It looks like it's pretty much going to go, but once I start moving it around and everything, if I don't want to crack visible at the top or the bottom, you're going to have two screw holes showing. And I'll show you right here. You see that? Close up, there's there's these two screw holes. And I'm going to be honest, if this was just my guitar, and I wasn't buying this with YouTube money and doing this for a YouTube video, I'd probably just uh, leave them screw holes there. But since I'm here to teach people, and some people are anal retentive as hell, we're going to make them invisible or damn near invisible and show you how you can make them invisible if you got the patience. Anyway, that P90 almost fits in that hole. I mean, it is so close to fitting in that hole. So what I did was to take that P90 and line that baby up right where that uh, cover needed to be. It is a tight margin of error or you're gonna see a crack. But I placed it and I took an X-Acto knife and scored around it. This is not only to mark it, this is to cut that finish so that hopefully when we remove material it doesn't chip out too far from the edge. Normally this is the point where I would start making a routing template right out the pickup cavity but this is so close to fitting and I already have to do finish repair. 
I'm just gonna take this chisel, start knocking the corners off. So I work my way around, tapping it with a little bitty ball peen hammer, knocking it down uh, straight and then sideways, getting everything uh, squared up there. And then I just started pushing on it and stuff, and oh man, the last guitar I used to chisel on is the one I was building myself, made out of oak. Hard as a rock, this mahogany feels like a uh, Play-Doh in comparison. It's just, just scooping it right out of there like you're scooping ice cream with a spoon. And we did knock a good chip out on the right side, but that should be a good example of uh, how you can make that invisible. So I just kept p fitting the pickup and then uh, working the hole a little bit at a time and fitting it over and over. And I think that with certain pickup routes, if they place that trim ring over that routed hole a certain way, I don't think you would have to do any work after you put a dog ear in there. But with this one, after the cover is placed, you can fully see those two screw holes. And as I said earlier, you can see that there's a bad chip around the one. So I need to fill those holes. I just took two toothpicks, dipped them in wood glue, took a hammer, banged them down in there as tight as I could get them. Then I cut them off with the chisel. The next thing I did was to take a piece of a popsicle stick broken and wrap sandpaper around it. I believe this was 1200 grit and I started roughing up those spots where I could uh, start to fill them in. And here I'm painting all the exposed wood black with acrylic paint. And this is just that uh, plain acrylic paint you get at Walmart with an apple on it. Now look at this and ask yourself, is there any way in hell that this can be made invisible? It actually can. I am flooding these areas with super glue, making sure it pulls up good and high off the surface. I've really messed up now, huh? <laughs> After we let this dry for an hour, I start leveling it out with my popsicle stick and this is a, with 600 grit. I really wouldn't suggest 600 grit. If you have the patience to use 1200 to begin with, it'd be way better off in the end. I wanted to get this done fast and it's best to use some kind of little block like I'm using the popsicle stick. Uh, you can use a little block of wood or whatever because you want it to be flat so it only takes off the high parts. And you can see I angled a little bit and I ate off a little bit of the black there on the edge of that pickup route and now that's going to have to be repaired as well. So then I do the same thing on the other side. You can see that it's smooth now, so I come in again to do touch up with the black acrylic paint. Then I flood those areas again with the super glue, and you can see here I'm using a popsicle stick to kind of smooth it out just a little bit. I let those dry for 30 minutes, and then I start it again with the little block in the 600 grit to knock them down flat again. Then it was time to move on to 12. Now is when we get to start making it pretty again, but now is when my damn camera battery died. All I was doing was the same repetitive sanding anyway, so I took the cell phone and took a picture in between every level so that you could clearly see the progress. This was halfway through the 1200 grit when I figured out the camera had cut off. And this is after the 1200 grit. You can see it's already mostly leveled, but it's really scratchy. And this is how it looked after the 1500 and you can tell I'm starting to spread out a little bit and feather that edge in. And now after the 2000 I'm basically just starting to try to erase those big scratches with smaller scratches. Like here with the 2500 you can tell I've gone even further away from those repairs. And now we're all the way to 3000 and I've gone even further. But you can still see a little difference in the color where I've put the acrylic on there. And this is really hazy, like how could this be fixed? Well here comes the magic. With the coarse rubbing compound you can see that the shine is back, all the haze is gone but there are still tiny minute scratches and swirls. And now after the fine polishing compound this is now the shiniest place on the guitar. I really had to polish wide around it to make it try to match and you see I got a little greedy with that shine and at the bottom left I burned a blister. Look at that little tiny speck. I'm not even gonna worry about fixing this though. That's like no kind of a blemish compared to some of the other things that were on the guitar when I got it. And here it is with the pickup cover on it. I mean, I really got my skirt lifted here. If there was anything bad, you would see it the most right now. I'm way cropped in on a cell phone camera with an overhead light. No one that did not watch this video would suspect a single thing looking at this guitar in their hands up close. One year later. Well, it felt like it. Just a couple hours. My camera battery is charged. We'll put the pickup in the hole. And you can see here, it looks pretty decent. Basically as in nothing you would notice. Now we can just drill some holes, put some screws in there, tighten them down, check it, good to go. Solder that lead in there under my hand where you can't see it. There it is. 
stuff it in there, put the cover on, throw some strings on it, and now step back to admire your work. Well, I guess the only thing left to do now is to plug it up and play it so you can hear it. But you've been hearing it in the background this whole time. If I had to describe it, it's like a Telecaster on steroids and meth. But like, it just got on the steroids and meth, so it's still pretty, but it, it can't handle the roid rage yet, so it's bipolar. Basically, chimey sparkle, super, super touch sensitive. As Soon as you dig in it, it growls. Still using that same little crappy sod state amp, but it sounds pretty decent, even though I did have it way too freaking loud. Eh, I was feeling it. So, without further ado, let's see how this thing works. Thank <laughs> you. 
stay recording the whole time? Well guys, that just about does it for this video. I am very well pleased with the results of this venture. I look forward to trying this uh, guitar out on some different amplifiers, get it pushing some cooking tubes. It certainly recorded great to do the background music. I will say one thing, this video took a long time. After editing, I'd say it was over 40 hours for sure, over about two weeks. And, and then it cost $200. Make that make sense. Now nah, really, I feel lucky as hell to be able to take that money from this channel and do stuff on this channel like this. It's awesome. If you're still here watching this, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I really hope this video was able to help somebody else. Maybe now you know you can just uh, buy you a cheap P90 and slap it in a cheap guitar, have the expensive guitar for whatever sense that makes. So if you found this educational or entertaining in any way, please uh, hit that like button. Maybe subscribe. I am Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time.